So, this is my machine, and I purchased this a few years ago, actually. Uh, my PlayStation 3 I bought, like, I think it was probably in 2009. Um, it died. So, I, well, yeah. So, I was thinking, well... I want to replace it but I don't want to spend too much money so I bought this one off eBay which works but the blu-ray drive was broke so and my intentions at the time were put my blu-ray drive into this one but the problem was that my blu-ray drive was incompatible with this one the power plug was different so I didn't know what to do and I didn't feel like making like a big dissection and whatever I was gonna mod everything so I ended up buying the super slim when that came out and that's my main PlayStation 3 to, that I use and this one is essentially strictly for PlayStation view Netflix uh, Hulu although we don't really use that anymore and uh, you know just for movies like that and Whenever we would want to watch a Blu-ray, I'd just bring in the PS4 or the other, you know, the Super Slim PS3 and do that. But I'm kind of tired of unhooking everything, so I figured, you know, I'm going to try and fix this one. And now I got this machine here, and what I will do is swap the drives, get that to work, hopefully. Uh, this one here was manufactured... March of 2008 and I think is now I think the other one said the same thing so this should work in theory so with that being said we're gonna remove this void sticker that had already been removed and we're gonna hold it, take this rubber plug out this one's a pain in the butt this screwdriver here. There we go. Uh, so yeah, this one has a Phillips, which is good because I don't feel like messing with that. Okay. Now need to make sure I keep these in, in here, here. So. Again, this actually, for as much as I've used this one, I'm very surprised that the uh, there's really no dust. But I figure since I'm going to be in here, I'm going to go ahead and clean the inside as well because there's no sense in putting it back together with a bunch of, bunch of dust in there. Actually, actually, this one's cleaner than the other one. That is really, really good. All right, so again, to get into here, we need to take a, take off the power supply there. I'll just use this handheld here. All right, and that should come off. This one's tough, okay. Um, yeah, forgot to pull the power. <laughs> okay, so that part's off. It doesn't look bad. I'm surprised, actually. Now for the Blu ray drive. I'm going to pull the power and again show you real close here with this so uh, again you know you just want to kind of uh, get that tab just like that and you gotta be careful because if you 
you break it. Woo! You're screwed. Just pull that off. There you go. So that that's the drive that sucks. And yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not too worried about it. It's not really that dirty in here to be honest. There's some dust on the fan, but I'm not really worried. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this back in. Damn. It's a pain in the butt. There. Alright, so that's that. Plug it back in. So we're gonna get this back together and hook it up. Test it out. Hopefully my money spent is good. Alright, so I've already plugged everything in. I uh, used this analog for my audio, which goes to my soundbar. And then we have the HDMI 2.0, or I mean the high speed HDMI, and my power. And we'll go ahead and turn the power on. Let's see what we get. Now, the other drive being defective, it did not really cause any issues with it turning on. I mean, we used it all the time. So let's see if I can play a game. Yeah, these are the games, but no disc. Hmm. Oh, you know what? There's one other thing we might have to do. Put our disc in. Let's see what we get. So far, nothing. <sighs> it's like money wasted. If it don't, if I can't get it to work, this fucking sucks. All right, so I can't get it to read a game, which sucks. But we don't really use it to play games in here. We use it to play movies. Um, uh, I really would prefer not to have to buy like a blu-ray player or something but what i'm gonna try i'm not expecting it to work but uh i put some star wars maybe the force will fix this we have here uh, the blu-ray we'll try that first all right we've got this here Now, as you can see, right there, it is reading the disc, but um, it may, I don't know why it's not showing up. Now, in this case, we gotta get to the movies. Since the Blu-ray didn't work, maybe the force is stronger with the DVD. It says right there that it is reading the disc. And it stopped. Hmm. The force is not strong with this one. Maybe Mel Gibson, um, maybe he'll fix it. Alright, let's get this going here. If you don't know what a super bit disc is, essentially what they did with some DVD movies, like The Patriot, um, they actually encoded it at a higher bit rate and various other things. It would depend on the movie. Uh, there were, I don't know how many, but there were some movies that actually were presented in 1080i, but they had zero extra features. In fact, the extra features were on a separate disc. Like, for instance, right here, that, you know, disc two is all the features, the bonus materials. That a lot of DVDs had. I can see the discs are still spinning so Mel Gibson must be doing something to it. I think this is a lost cause for now. Um, I think basically what happened here is the motherboard on this machine 
where the pin connectors are for the ribbon cable inside there. I think it's just messed up. So if I can fix the other machine, perhaps that will just take care of my issue and you know whatever. But we'll see. Alrighty. So back with this purchased machine. So that kind of sucks, I can't get that drive to work, but if it is indeed actually, you know, the ribbon cable that's the problem, which is very possible, um, maybe I can get this board to work and you know, we'll see what happens there. So I just got my power supply off of that. and. We're going to have to get this hard drive out of here that I temporarily put in. hard drive is stuck in there because I didn't screw it into the caddy. Figured I'd save time and now I'm just not saving time. Kind of funny how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off anyway. So, on this caddy lid, there's two screws, and only two screws, and there are arrows with the letter M that tell you where they go. Now, what I do is I put the screws back in there so that I don't lose them because they are real small. Next thing is unplugging a bunch of stuff. All right, so what I do, we got to strip it. Clean. So we're going to take this wire off, just put that to the side. There's this one here which provides power to the fan. We're going to take that off. And we got to undo the ground, which is right here. And let's get another right screwdriver. Let me use the power. Right there. Bam! Think you can stop me? <laughs> Alright, so there's that. Keep that to the side. We want to remove these screws. Uh, this one is another tiny guy. Doing this with one hand is not easy. Real tiny. Put that to the side. Same with this one here. Just remove that with my hand here. Alright, and then this right here just lifts up and we're gonna. What I do here, just uh, I'm gonna have to remove the tape. Yeah, I ripped it. Oops. And then this ribbon cable here, uh, we just pull up. It's kind of like a cartridge in in respect to how it goes in. I wish the Blu-ray. It was the same way. That was such a pain in the ass. Uh, so small. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the other screws. Little guy right here. 
magnet. Okay. Then you got your little battery. I can pull this out. There we go. Then what we're going to do is there's this screw, this screw, this screw, and this screw right here, and right here, and then you got these beasts. These ones are actually holding the heat sink, uh, but we need to take them off anyway, so. So we will go ahead and do that. Okay, so I removed all the screws, and the ones holding these on are kind of thick, like that. So, remove these plates, and uh, now this shielding comes right off, Let's set that aside, and as you can see, Oh, we got the motherboard exposed. And there's no screws holding it on, so we should be able to just pull it up. But it will be stuck to the heat sink, which is underneath. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. Uh, you can we'll switch camera angles. So you just want to kind of stick your fingers in the cracks here and, and lift. Uh, it's, you know, see, the thermal compound, I don't know if you can see it or not, I can't tell. But the thermal compound is what, it, basically, it's, it's stuck pretty good. Um, so what we're going to do is clean this up. And then uh, we're actually, we're going to put it in the oven. So here, here, I just wanted to, before we put this in the oven, I wanted to show you real quick that here's the thermal paste, and I'm going to clean that up. And uh, these are your chips, the RSX and the cell. Um, it's definitely an interesting machine. And then, you know, that's your RAM right there. And, uh, See. Yeah, I'm guessing that these chips here are your uh, DDR3, and then these ones here are your RAM bus. Not 100% sure on that. I didn't look it up or anything, but I'm just taking a fat guess. And there's a thermal pad right here. We want to keep this. We do not want to put this in the oven. So we're going to put that on the side. And we'll go ahead and clean this up with paper towel. This should just you know, come off. It's, it's kind of hard. So, And then I'll show you how we're going to do it in the oven. All right, so before we do the oven, like I said, we need to clean this. So um, we don't want to bake this paste but I will show you, after I wipe this off, which is which. Surprisingly though, this board is fairly dust free. Um, I like using a vacuum. Adam Krolik likes using his data vac or the, whatever that massive air blower is. And then some people use compressed air to blow the shit out of there but uh, use a vacuum it's pretty good you just got to be careful because you don't want it sucking up components but uh, yeah so this came pretty clean and we'll have to get the heat sinks as well 
and uh, then you know that'll be good. And then actually, uh, the chip that had the thermal pad on it, we gotta wipe that too. That's not terrible, but we want to make sure that everything gets cleaned up. And then there are. Let me show this one up close because I forgot about these, and we we definitely don't want to fry these either. So right here, these are also thermal pads that we need to keep, and we don't want to put them in the oven. And then right here, as you can see, here's your RSX, it's your graphics chip by NVIDIA. And then this is your cell broadband engine. And that chip right here, believe it or not, is faster than the one in the PlayStation 4. Uh, so, as a whole, as far as number crunchings go, these two processors here equate to more floating point operations per second than the PlayStation 4 does. Unfortunately, the memory system is what held this thing back. So, with that being said, we're going to move on to the next step. And uh, that's also going to be another video. So, with you know things that we've learned today as far as <laughs> how things went, um, my current PS3's drive was messed up, and then I put this one into it, and it still didn't work. So, if I'm able to get this machine to work with my old Blu-ray drive, and it works, then I know that it's the motherboard, and most likely the ribbon cable is possibly bad. So, we'll see what happens after we bake this and put it back together and everything. But, that's going to be in the next video. So with that being said, happy gaming, and uh, you know maybe maybe buy a PS3 or something on eBay and uh, you know tinker with it, have a little fun. I am gonna go into the kitchen, and I will see you guys later.